A man chooses, a slave obeys. Those are the words of a man who wanted to create a utopia, a place for the top 1% to live. He wanted to create rapture, and so he did. Andrew Ryan announced that the construction was completed in the late months of 1951. Rapture was certainly a site for Sorais in the beginning, but was doomed to fail from the start. Today I'm going to ask and hopefully answer a very interesting question. Could it be real? Or, well, is Rapture possible using today's technology or was it truly a failure waiting to happen? To answer that we need to travel to the mid-Atlantic, under the sea roughly 2000 meters deep at these coordinates. There and only there will we find what we're looking for. Rapture has been revealed to be located there through a note which is on a package that Jack has at the very start of the game. Where is this in the Atlantic Ocean? Well, it's pretty northern, in between Iceland and Greenland, and roughly 223 miles away from Iceland's capital of Reykjavik. It's located near some of the shallowest waters on our planet, however it is still fairly deep compared to the shallowest. Rapture is a city, I'm sure most of you would understand this, and what do cities have an abundance of? Well, quite a few things actually, but I am referring to the large mass of humans that inhabit these giant settlements. And what do humans require to survive most? Oxygen. Rapture, being under 2000 meters of dense liquid, couldn't possibly hitch onto the regular oxygen stockpile produced by many of the plant life on the Earth's surface, so Ryan had to find another way. In the game, there is an area in which the player can explore, known as Arcadia. It is basically a penthouse garden with a wide variety of plant species. So, we're sorted out for oxygen, right? Well, assuming that this garden and possibly multiple others on top of nearest tall buildings could produce enough oxygen for the city's population, there would be the slight problem with distributing it. This would require major engineering to ventilate it around the whole fucking city. However, that's not the biggest issue. The sunlight is so minor down there it halts many plants from photosynthesizing. The euphotic zone is where most of the underwater photosynthesis takes place. This however only goes to around 100 meters or 328 feet deep. Since Rapture is based on the real world city of New York, let's take a look at the current tallest building in the city. The One World Trade Center or the Freedom Tower stands at roughly 500 meters or 1770 feet, meaning the building in which we see Arcadia in would most likely not be tall enough to reach the euphotic zone despite the fact that we can visibly see rays of sunlight. This is assuming that the tallest building in Rapture is not any larger than the tallest buildings in New York. If that is the case, we won't be seeing any plants providing any oxygen supplies for our time down in Rapture. However, this garden would in fact be a waste of time and only really for aesthetics. Being underwater has its advantages. And what is that I hear you ask? Well, never running out of a fucking water source and therefore an oxygen source is a pretty darn good benefit. I'm sure all of you know from one of your first ever science classes that water is H2O, meaning water is made up of two thirds hydrogen and one third oxygen. Extracting the oxygen from said water would surely be a doddle for Ryan, having some of the brightest minds backing his project. Running a specific electrical current to isolate the oxygen would do it. It's a method that divers and even some submarines have used for many years to retain crucial oxygen pockets for their expeditions. There is even a James Bond-like device that can almost give you an unlimited supply of oxygen whilst underwater. This device is called the Triton Rebreather and was conceived in North Korea by a Mr. Yeon. It functions when the diver bites down on the plastic mouthpiece. This then triggers the two arms on the side of the mask to act as gills. As I previously mentioned, these sorts of devices extract the oxygen away from the hydrogen. This process is done in a small chamber which releases the liquid back into the ocean, allowing for the user to breathe at their own leisure. As with many mobile devices, it is battery powered, and sadly not all batteries last forever. It is however dubbed a super micro battery, which is 30 times smaller than regular batteries and can be charged at around 1000 times faster than any reliable rechargeable battery. It's still in its prototype stage, but it's looking promising for divers out there, so that's definitely not going to be an issue. The device may have extracted the hydrogen away from the oxygen in the water, giving us breathable air, but we have something else that we as humans need rid of, a little gas that we tend to exhale known as carbon dioxide. On the surface, we don't tend to care for this, as we're essentially giving our fair share back to the plants that provide our oxygen. However, as I mentioned, plants will be pretty scarce then in Rapture along with being pretty redundant. So we have to find another way of getting rid of our damn dirty and, most importantly, deadly morning breath. Sadly, a few Tic Tacs won't do the trick. In the Bioshock Infinite expansion, Burial at Sea, 
the player returns to Rapture in the shoes of Elizabeth. There is a mission in Episode 2 in which you are tasked with replacing the CO2 scrubber, which is a device that cleans the CO2 in the air supply that the humans down in Rapture would breathe. In our real world, this technology has been around for plenty of years and has been even used in submarines and spacecrafts when there is no other way of getting rid of the carbon and just keep the oxygen. Even in the early 1900s, the more advanced submarines used similar technology to allow for long periods of underwater travel. The CO2 scrubber is implemented as a part of the air filtration system and can filter out the carbon gas, funneling it down a different pipe away from the general populace. This could then be harvested in numerous ways one of which could be focused on vegetation growth if the buildings were somehow high enough to reach the euphotic zone that I previously mentioned. So far so good, right? Well, another crucial part of survival is body temperature. In Rapture, being roughly 2000 meters or 6560 feet below sea level, the temperature can drop below 4 degrees celsius or 39 degrees fahrenheit. Sure, it's not freezing, but you will definitely feel uncomfortable in it. Your body will slowly drop in temperature unless you can find another source of warmth, via many layers of clothing, a lovely fire, or central heating. You probably don't feel drastically cold very often in your own home due to 21st century central heating, which averages out between 16 to 21 degrees Celsius or 64 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit depending on the time of the year. This temperature allows your body to keep a healthy temperature above 35 and below 38 Celsius or 97 and 100 Fahrenheit. Rapture's location is actually the key to its success in the field. You may recall me mentioning it was fairly near Iceland, and what is Iceland known for? Well, now it's known for knocking England out of the Euros, but it's more commonly known for having a lot of brilliant geographical locations. Iceland is situated between two tectonic plates, which generally means a lot of geological activity is in that area. In 2010, you may recall the volcano of, um, uh, I'm not even going to try that. Anyway. This volcano erupted causing a major air traffic disruption due to a massive ash cloud it created. This sort of thing happens on a regular basis along that tectonic plate, although we don't notice it most of the time as we don't experience any major inconvenience as they generally aren't to this scale. Anyway, these events can produce massive amounts of energy in numerous ways. Geothermal energy has actually become a very popular source of renewable energy in Iceland, so much so that it's actually used to produce 85% of the country's total energy usage. And you know what? The folks over at 2K have made their fictional city use this exact method. The 8th level within Bioshock, being Hephaestus, is a giant power station designed by Andrew Ryan to harness the heat from geothermal vents on the ocean floor. It was an early structure in the construction of the city to make sure it definitely had power throughout the building process. So it's sorted for electricity, but what about the thing I was actually talking about? Heat. Well, in case you've missed the whole point, I'll say it again. Rapture uses geothermal energy which is basically pockets of natural heat energy being pushed out from the depths of our planet. The folks under the sea will be able to capture and harness this energy in both power for lights alongside anything else electrical, along with ye old central heating. So Rapture's looking pretty good, isn't it? Oxygen? Check. Relieved of deadly amounts of carbon? Check. Heating and electricity? Double check. So why doesn't it exist in our real world already? One major flaw that I subtly mentioned early on was the location of the city. There are multiple areas along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge which in fact would be much more suitable. The problem is actually the depth. The skyscrapers that are roughly 2000 meters under the ocean would undergo around 20,500 kilopascals of pressure, which is about 203 times that of what our buildings at sea level receive. The force would ultimately crush the buildings from the outside in, especially those that are much taller. Some of you may be wondering what about the underwater hotel buildings currently being built across the world, be it in Fiji or Dubai? Well, they are in much shallower waters in comparison to what Rapture would be in. The Deep Ocean Technology Dubai project only plans to go about 10 to 15 meters below the sea level in a very controlled environment. It's certainly a start, but look at the architectural design. Very smooth and streamlined in comparison to our blocky skyscraper like buildings in Rapture. The water pressure would be massively decreased at those levels along with the ability for water to smoothly go over the top of the underwater segment. There is also numerous laboratories located across multiple locations on the ocean floor. The Aquarius Laboratory, along with two others, is located in the Florida Keys. It acts as a place for divers and scientists to go down and study marine wildlife for long periods of time. It isn't much deeper than the previously mentioned hotel at roughly 20 meters deep, but it does show that scientific fields have thought about it and are willing to commit resources on developing it further. I mean, this lab has been in action since 1986, so another, much deeper lab may be just around the corner, pushing our boundaries yet again under the ocean. So I'm sorry to say, but Rapture would not be plausible today. 
Sure, it checked a lot of the stuff that we needed to survive, but the building would get crushed like a tin can under that amount of pressure. And I'm not even going to touch erosion today because that shit has rigged it from the start. We as the human race need to work on the ability to build much stronger structures that could withstand even more pressure if we have a chance of building Rapture at all. As I mentioned, there are plans and development projects for underwater buildings happening right now, but they are very small projects in much shallower waters. There are shallower waters that might have given Rapture more of a chance to the northeast of where Rapture is supposed to be located, but it's still a stretch. So, it's, it's not looking great. So that was my video on Andrew Ryan's Rapture within the Bioshock series. The outcome does really suck, and it would be much cooler to tell you guys that we can build it today, but sadly that's not the case. Anyway, my name is Andrew Orstelli111, and I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. And I'll invite you to follow me at Stelly's Militia or the Shoddycast on Twitter. And uh, would you kindly like this video and maybe subscribe to our channel for more awesome content. If you would like more Bioshock topics, do tell me in the comment section below. And if you've got any questions, feel free to shoot them there as well. If you'd like to do more than that though, you can shoot us a dollar or two through Patreon for some sweet exclusive benefits. We appreciate that a bunch. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you guys on the next one.